Pan's Labyrinth is one seriously dark and fantastical fairy tale, so pretty much what one would expect from director Guillermo del Toro. Filled with dark and magical creatures, the rule of three, and tons and tons of layers. Yet was it indeed all real? Or was it just in Ophelia's head? Hello, I'm Nick, and it's been a while. So today, let's look at a fairy tale world that bleeds reality. In Pan's Labyrinth, we follow the little girl Ophelia as she completes three tasks to ascend her way to the throne in the underworld, meeting Mr. Fawn and from there encountering stranger and more dark and wonderful things. The real world and the fantasy world mirror each other in almost every way. Let's start with Ophelia's first task, her quest to cure a sick tree. So in one form, this is just another fantasy quest in the vein of the three task system. Do this, find this, defeat this. However, that tree looks a little too suspiciously like fallopian tubes. Bear with me on this one. The fawn has said that the tree is sick, and a great toad has been sucking the life out of it, making it ill. What else is doing this in the film? Well, Ophelia's little brother to her mum. This is in fact an extension of Ophelia trying to help her mother, her viewing her baby brother as a sickness, and a toad. The toad exploding is in fact her attempt to birth the boy, to end her mum's pain. Yeah, unpleasant, I know. However, Ophelia is still worried for her mother, and after a fairly brutal look into her book, she realises she still doesn't love her brother. She can't see him beyond the pain that it causes her mother. And so she is given a mandrake root, one that was alive and has to be nurtured, cared for to solve the sickness. Now this to me seems like Ophelia beginning to care for her brother, to see him as something other than pain, and to love and look after him. So how far does this reality mirror Ophelia's fable? Let's continue. Now we meet Mr. Posterboy of the film, the Pale Man. And it's pretty easy to see why this is. But what does this Pale Man actually represent? Well, if we look closely at the two scenes one after another, just like in the film, they are exactly the same. And who sits at the end of the table at both? Vidal and the Pale Man. However, I do believe that the Pale Man in fact represents Vidal and all at the table. The uncaring and selfish dinner guests. As Vidal says in the scene, stop telling silly stories to the mother about how they met and all the children's shoes in the Pale Man's lair and the way the monster devours the children and the fairies is in fact to me a symbol that both of them are the destruction of childhood. The pale man, the extension of all the adults at the table, the ones who don't care for the silly stories about how they met or love. The fairies are also an interesting symbol, not altogether beautiful, but as a symbol of childhood, beautiful for those who can still imagine and still see it. The last challenge actually to me is perhaps the most interesting, the giving of her brother without question to the fawn, the final test leading to her rebirth, or if you're more morbid, her death. This theme of complete obedience is a theme that runs throughout the film alongside its opposite, disobedience. The Doctor, Mercedes and Ophelia, all exemplifying the theme of disobedience with the Captain and Ophelia's mother following without question. It's a test for the extension of who she is and who she wants to be, whether she'll be a follower like her mum or a trailblazer like Mercedes. She finds it easy to disobey bad people. What I think this is is whether she has the stomach or the character to disobey those who appear good for nefarious reasons. The fawn also looking younger and well, slightly less creepy than he appeared to before to make the decision all the more difficult. This leads her to show who she really is, and then unfortunately being killed. So this leads us to the question, is this truly all inside Ophelia's head? There's a pretty convincing argument. The toad is her fears for her mother, the pale man is vital and the loss of innocence, and the final test of giving blood is her growing up and deciding who she's going to be. Plus the fact that Vidal cannot see the fawn, it's pretty convincing that it's not real. The colours are also a beautiful way of telling the worlds apart, and a clue. The lifeless steel cold blues for the real world, the golden saturated yellows for the fantasy, and for the underground, the untrusty midpoint potent greens. However, as Ophelia gets closer to her death, or rebirth at the end of the film, the colours begin to bleed into each other. The reality turns to fantasy, or the fantasy turns to reality. If you follow the reality theory, then here she dies, 
retreating into her mind and dying with her fantasy. However, I don't think this is true, as if it was all in her head, then how did she leave her guarded room, if not for the help of a little piece of chalk? <laughs>